Uh, Rav Mordechai, is that you in charge today? Is there any way, I've been looking at pulling with this video there before, is there any way that we can split screen it somehow, or I mean, screen share it somehow, and put that YouTube video on? I want to address Rav, Rav Eliezer's comments that he sent to me. Um, he sent them to me, not to everybody, which is um, my fault, because I should send them to everybody, which I will. Is there any way to get that uh, YouTube video on in, with at the same time, or do we have to just put that on? What do you suggest? Um, the you're talking about the video that uh, Rabbi Parkoff suggested we look at again. I think he sent it an email. Your speaker is on. Uh, are your speakers on? Uh, my speaker was off. Okay. Sorry, hold on. My speaker was off. I apologize. Okay, now my speakers are on. What okay. was? Well, uh, I was just wondering which uh, video. Uh, uh, the the YouTube video. There's only was there more than one YouTube. Yes, we showed uh, like four or five of them. No, but YouTube's. Uh, yeah, the one it was. Yeah, there were four from YouTube, one from Yeshiva World. Hey, for news from Yeshiva World. Okay, so I think I think Rabbi Parkoff uh, attached it in his email. Let me check. Okay, yes, he attached them in his email. Which one specifically did you want? Because he sent two emails. Number two? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I had to go and say, I don't know which one, I, I don't know which one of the two it is. So let's, can we show both? Um, I can, I, I can post them both up, sure. Okay, fine, let's show both, both. And uh, I assume there, there's some overlap between the two. In the meantime, everybody say, um, any of you who, uh, who live in Brooklyn and want to see uh the uh the, the the matzah baking now that we've gone through this sugya the only thing i can offer you and i try to i try to get one of the good chaburis liquid chaburis uh to allow us in, but that's hard because um you, you know they're all worried that you're going to want to take away their matzah and i told them that all you want to do is come as a you know observe and that uh it's not so simple so i will be I will be making matzah this afternoon at 5.15 in the Shatzah Basa Bakery, and Ramon Chai will be making matzah next Wednesday at uh, 3.30, I think he said, in the Shatzah Basa Bakery. 3.45. 3.45. So um, anybody who wants to email us um, and show up, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of you have been there and seen it, but now that we've learned it, and the same holds true for me. Um, now, when you learn it, it's a different understanding of the experience, and you actually know a bit what's going on, and you can even see what's going wrong. So let's see. Uh, Ray Farkov sent us Zion. He sent us uh, these videos with his comments. I don't even see him on. 
Uh, it's not on, but one, okay. one of the videos is from the bakery in Lawrence from a few years ago. Is that the one you wanted to look at? I don't know. There was one, the one, one of them he sent, which is they did the following things, and uh, Mike and Eric show we have this, but we would never do that. So let's let, let put on both. We'll see. Okay, I'll put I'll post them both up. All right, let me. They're each three minutes, right? So there's not a big investment of time here, right? For those of you who saw it uh, Sunday night, and there weren't that many, um, okay, bear with us. For those of you who have not seen it, so I'm going to try to tie the, the what you see visually to Matzah Baker and Lawrence. This is a new thing to me. I didn't know there was a Matzah Baker and Lawrence, but okay. Why not? Past tense. Past tense. There was, okay. So you can see the windows are blacked out. Um, because of Tafnun Tess Asif Alifri's that there. So you can see the, this is the uh, beginning of the leaching process. Um, that's the water. Uh, water has to be in an enclosed room. Every matzah bakery that I've been in, it's only about two or three, have this type of operation. Okay, uh, keep on going. water and flour. They're kept in separate rooms and only brought out in the quantities necessary for that particular run. Before anyone is allowed to handle the dough or use any of the equipment, their hands must be thoroughly cleaned and inspected and the rolling pins and other items checked for any dough residue. Uh, can you freeze that? Can you freeze that? All surfaces are thoroughly clean before the next batch of dough will be brought into the room at the start of the 18 minutes. Can you freeze it? Can you freeze it? Yeah, did I see those sticks as plastic? Uh, back it up a bit. Were those sticks plastic? Did anybody see? Should I should open up your mic, please. Um, no, they look like they're aluminum. They're metal. They, they look metal, like metal they're, sticks. They're, the pin, they're rolling pins. Those are metal. Yeah, plastic would be the That's the big ones. Not the big ones. This is the, the banger. Uh, yeah, you know, the little ones. Be, move it back. They were, they were metal? No. Yeah, metal. So the chef does not use metal, Mordechai, right? They use wood, correct? I'm 99% sure, at least until a couple of years ago. So let's see the, let's see the stick again. Okay, he's checking the kids. And by the way, obviously, it goes without saying that in, in a in a uh, rush chabura, there's, there's no chance of allowing any kids, as you saw there. And this is the Lawrence Matzah Bakery, so they have a uh, different clientele. This is plastic. This is metal. Looks like it. Okay, so they use metal sticks. Um, metal sticks have, as we heard, milus and chesrinus. I assume. I assume there's no sanding of metal sticks, so it's just cleaning. Um, how do they clean it? They with water and then they wipe it. That's what we saw in Shkhanarch, right? So in Shkhanarch, the Ramah said, brought the maril that you both um, you are reichets uh, and you, you sand and you madir. But the maril was talking about um, the maril was talking about wood. So I guess when it comes to metal, all you can do is um, let's see. Um, Let me read you the Shukhanarach. Achar Asiya Yidichem V'yinagvem Hetev Lazo Takim Ben Pam Shinyas Maril And other Tfem Yimash Anayigim Ligari Run So what would the English translation Ligari Run be today? I guess it would be the sanding process, right? What did, they do, what did they do in those days? They used the same sandpaper as we had? In times of the Maril and 500 years ago, I guess they did, right? I mean, I don't know if they had actual sophisticated industrial sandpaper that we have, but they used something to 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 to, to scrape it. That's what the Maram says. I'm reading a tough test, and so don't, don't move it. So let's keep the picture here. You can't do both. You cannot clean my Okay, so on metal. Um, we don't have wood here. Maybe another one. The other ones is wood. We don't have wood. We have metal. Metal. All you can do is a dacha. Okay. 
So let's go right there. Um, Mordechai, when you hear me when I say stop, do you hear me over the noise of the video? How do I tell you to stop? Go in the chat? I guess you should go in the chat and, and tell you to pause it, right? Okay. Mordechai, right there. And the rolling pins and other items checked for any dough residue. Everybody, you got to all surfaces are thoroughly cleaned before the next batch of dough will be brought into the room at the start of What's the What's that on the table there? What's that on the table? Pause that a sec. What was that on the table? It looked like a bio flower. Why was that on the table? Anybody see that thing on the table? I don't know. To me, it looks like a box of flour, but it can't be. How could there possibly be a box of flour? Uh, what's that? What is that? Wait, wiping cloths. Wiping stuff? Wiping cloths? Cloths? Yeah, yeah wiping cloths. Okay. Some kind of sanitizer. Some kind of sanitizer. Uh, you mean uh, like a wipey, like like we use to wipe hands, right? With the pre-wipe thing. Okay. Uh, now... Uh, I see, yeah, okay. It looks like they're only Shabbos here. Shabbos um, here. Looks like these Bukharam are part of a Chabura. The process begins here, where the dough is kneaded and thoroughly mixed using stainless steel rods. So much for the Shabbos Shabbos. Um, as you can see. Oh, stop it there. Hold on, stop it there. Well, so one second. That piece of dough was lying on that metal uh, uh, that metal uh, table. Looked to me unattended. So what? why was it lying there unattended? So this certainly, I don't know, Gessel Kher wouldn't qualify for Rosh Matzis uh, unless the Isuk requirement, this requirement that we saw Started Lechera after the Lisha. Am I correct about that? Yes. Right. I'm reading the Lashon of the of the of the Mechaber. a filler echad. So when does that start? I'm reading Tufnun Tess Beis. Rotzalayim ala achali shishasa kaidim shehischala arachaisa. I'm not here to knock on any matzah bakery. But if you go back uh, a few seconds, this is 134. If you go back to, to 115, if you can do that, I don't know, uh, 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 110, I guess, 110. Yeah, it looked to me like there's a piece of unattended dough on that table, no? Play it again. Hello. The process begins here, where the dough is kneaded and thoroughly mixed using stainless steel rods. The wood in the other room is used to stoke the furnace to keep it at the proper temperature. Yeah, I'm going to go back to Detroit. I'm going to show kids what this is. What? I'm going to show this to kids in Detroit. What? I'm going to show this to kids in Detroit. Once the dough is kneaded, it is brought into the rolling room, where it is sliced and then rolled out into the individual matzos. Okay. 
After the matzah is rolled out, it is then perforated and hung over wooden rods. These rods are used to place the matzah in the oven. Can we pause this second? Before a rod we skipped a couple of steps, steps, as you can see in this, on this video. On this video, they skipped a whole bunch of steps. Um, this is a, you know, a video made for a bit of a more uh, progressive audience, let's put it that way. You saw they skipped the steps of the cunning, um, and it went straight onto the table of the aricha. It looks to me that they were letting the guests do the aricha, but maybe not. Uh, they skipped the aricha, but now they're showing you already how to get it onto the sticks. So go ahead. Now to remove any bits of dough from the last placement. Pause for a second. Just pause for a second. Pause, pause. So you can see, Rabbi Sai, as far as I can tell, and what if I correct me if I'm wrong, this looks to be a baker that's four on a stick. So most uh, high yield Haredi bakeries that are designed non Khaburas uh, do four on a stick because that seems to be the most that you can get on and they need to make a lot of matzahs. Um, the downside of that is you need to get four matzahs onto a stick very fast. And then the more matzahs you have on a stick, the more possible uh, residue you can have on a long stick. But this is four. Am I counting correctly? Can we guys you see four? Yeah, but my question is, while they're sitting there, what does the rush say about that? So, um, so the answer to that is you'll hear today from Rabbi Katz exactly what you'll hear. But um, would this qualify? For, 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 I mean, how much they have to get onto the stick? If someone has to pick up the stick. The stick can't be in Piatanor, right? Obviously, so they so it has to be in this in the middle of this room, at least X feet away from the doorway of the next room. Because once you're through the mashkai for the doorway of the next room. I don't know for a fact, but it seems to me uh, since the ovens generally are only a few feet away from there, so that's already considered to be piatana, and then you got heat, and then uh, then you're in big trouble. So uh, it has to be here for X amount of seconds. So how the chaburas do? That's why I'm desperate to go and film a chabura so I can, you know, we can kind of show it side by side and 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 show the thing. We'll show another couple of videos here in the next ten minutes. So we'll see if there's any big variations. But how else can they do it? So they put four on, and let's see how fast it takes from here to get it to the oven. And the answer to your question is these are not rush matzahs, obviously. At what point are they not rush matzahs? That Rabbi Kassel will explain, but I assume, since I heard this already, um, he, he will explain today. But let's see. Mordechai, um, when I go like this, I'm asking you please take a pause. Go ahead. Matzahs are lying on the stick. As Shmuel points out correctly, those matzahs are lying on the stick without any isuk, right? So, I don't know. Let's say it is a rush kabura. I guess the answer is the following: the, the that's why the the the, the rush kaburas, or I don't know how we're calling them, the the digdo kaburas will not allow for on a stick. The maximum they're allowing a stick is two. Um, I think uh, Rabbi Katz told me they have two on a stick. So if the maximum they allow on a stick is two, then that cuts down the problem by half. Some chaburis, the super chaburis, the maximum they allow on a stick is that answers your question. Because as soon as it gets on the stick, it goes into the thing, and then you got the line net in the town of because, uh, you know, short of uh, mentally beaming it into the oven, uh, it has to be carried. So that it couldn't be considered a Shia um, unless you're being lushed closer, at which the aforementioned problem comes. Okay, so um, here, you have, here you got four, and um, those of you who will either come today 
or next Wednesday, I'm going to take a few videos of somebody if I can figure out how to do that with my phone. I'm not too good at that. Um, today, and maybe Mordechai will, and we'll show it again. Right there. Here we see the tool used to perforate the matzah. It is fully stainless like the rest of the implements, and it is thoroughly cleaned between each run. By the way, as you can see from the Nikko process, it wasn't super speed. It didn't seem to me that each one of them were exactly uniform in their application of Shesi uh, Ve'erev. And as you can see, you want to know where bumps and ridges and full lace of matzah come? You can saw it on the table there. Let's see where are we at, 406. Um, Hagram, if you can go back to 350, you'll see, or 340, I don't know, you'll see that there were a lot of uh, folds in the matzah, including at the nickel process, because you can't do nickel on a folded matzah, but while he was folding it, while he was being monocrate, he created a rigid, he created an uneven surface. You can see, let's go back to, uh, okay, you want to do from there, fine. It's already, on, not, it's already not straight. See that matzah line there, the thing has a ridge through it. So, Bruce wouldn't necessarily accept that. Here we see the tool used to perforate the matzah. It is fully stainless like the rest of the implements, and it is thoroughly cleaned between each run. Right there is a couple. Right there is a ridge. It's not straightened out. That's why you got matches with folds in them. Okay? <clears throat> if they would have more time and that, that it wouldn't be such a pressure, that wouldn't happen. It'd be forced out every matzo by hand. Everybody knows why the matzo is ready to be placed in the oven. So, how far away here are we from the oven? So there are two shivers, I think. No, the second guy is what? The second guy is a stick cleaner. What's the second guy on the right in the white shirt? Shiva's wearing a blue shirt. First of all, that would never work in Lakewood in the first place, uh, <laughs> despite his beard. <laughs> the guy white is taking the matzahs out of the oven. The, the guy in the white is taking the he's, he's, he's the taker outer. What's he called? Is there a Yiddish name for that? Uh, Laser's here. To open up your microblazer. Uh, I don't know what he's called. <laughs> In, in Israel, they call him the baker, the baker. So who's the geimer? The geimer is the one who finishes up at, on the table, the, the last two rollers. The last two rollers are called geimer. Before the they're, they're, they're supposed uh -huh. to roll it professionally. Is this the video that you had a problem with, or is the next one? I had a problem on the table that the, the geimer, um, there was, it looked like a piece of dough right in front of him. It was obviously a matzah he wasn't happy with. So he rolled it up and put it in front of him. And it was just sitting there for 10 minutes. And he was just waiting till he could get back to it. Now, he should not have gotten back to it. He should have thrown it away. In this video? Was it on this yes, video? In this video. I think it would be way before. Way before. No, obviously way table. before. Okay, we can go back and look for it. But if that's the case, that seems to me to be pretty unprofessional. No, again, I'm not ma knocking any matzah bakery. I'm just looking. It should at the have process. been a mashkiach there watching and taking and, and and making sure they don't do such things. Was th was that guy a professional or was he a guest? He the guy usually a gomer is a professional because they know how to do. It. Once you get a thin matzah, you have to know how to get it round. Otherwise, it comes out triangle. Right, so the, the begin the Moscow and the guy are usually professionals, and maybe the guys in the middle. Is that the that the usual your experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's finish this. Uh, anyway, so the guy, one second. How long would you say it took to get while it was put on the sticks into the oven? So we we can time it. We had it on a video here, and obviously this is the video. It was, it was way too long. The matzah. Way too long, right? Way too long. 
in the matzah factories that I that I uh, that I was uh, part of, as soon as it got onto the stick, the 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 guy took it into the oven. It was it was instantaneous. Um, there was no hanging around. They they kept working on it until the, he put. They, they didn't do it this way. This guy puts the, the they they have a stick on a on a on a frame. We we put the stick on the table, and as soon as they saw the stick open, then they put the matzahs on the stick. You could even do four, but uh, it was instantaneous. You can do four. They had four on the stick in your in your bakery. Yeah, they did. They could do sometimes. It was they could do seconds. four, but how does it? By definition, it takes a few seconds to get four onto a stick. No, right? no, no, not if they only over here because they have a frame. They put it on top and they have a. They, they uh, have a. They, they all throw bakeries have a frame. You can't hold. You can't hold the pole in your hands. It's not the miracle. No, no. The, so the baker would stand there by the window, holding the pole. They put the pole on the table. What do you right mean, the baker? No, the baker, not baker. Who, who's, who do you give him his real Whoever name? Whoever is holding the pole, the, the guy in the blue. The yeah. guy in the blue, he, uh -huh. he would, he was, he would go to the window. I, I, we call him different over here, whatever you call him. So they, they uh, he would go to the window, put the pole down and stand there. And then the game rim would put the, Matzes on the pole um, uh, while it was on the table, directly on the pole, and he would then he would take it and go directly into the oven. So there were no shahiyas. Over here, there were shahiyas. It was up to a minute. Okay, so fine. And these are kosher matzes. When it's I kosher. say that, when I say they are kosher matzes, I would even say that they're you know you can even use them for the leil seder, but they're not what we're going to learn today about rush matzes. Okay, Rabbi Ezra's points are all very well taken. Let's go further. But the, you'll notice after the matzah is placed in the oven, the rod that we'll was used is second. placed let's, let's on the side this. and taken to be sanded down before it is used again. Yeah. But note they use metal poles for the alisha and wooden poles for the oven. Throughout the entire process, the timer on the wall is counting down the time left before the run must be completed. While each segment of time is 18 minutes, the actual time that a matzah will be in the oven is about 15 seconds, any longer, and it would burn. See, these, these matzahs are, uh, oh, they, oh, I don't know, they look like all other matzahs. The oven is of brick and cinder block and is heated with coal and wood placed around the sides. When the matzah is taken out of the oven, it is placed in rolling carts, which will be taken upstairs to the boxing area. Yeah, okay, so you hear him back in the back saying, yeah, take challah every batch, every, uh, 
every batch of Kalash was taken care of. Uh, you know, they were sitting out there before, but they should have really been doing uh, a routine the same as the Mitzvah, which is good master bakery to Mitzvah, we'll keep on saying same as the Mitzvah every minute or two. Right, Mordechai? You know, the Shots of Master Bakery to do that? Right? Okay, I'm not yes, sure that's correct. Left here. The matzah carts are brought to the second floor by means of a dumb waiter. Here we see one bringing back an empty cart. Adjacent to the dumb waiter is the chute where the used rods are placed. These will be pulled upstairs to a separate area where they will be sanded down. The rods are used only once, right? For Moshe said you can use the rods more than once, but I guess all bakeries use the rods only once. Am I right about this or incorrect? Somebody comment on that? No, we didn't lose anything. I told him after that, he said, I'm taking the pictures. I threw it. Yeah, I told you. The oven is then restoked during the downtime in preparation for the next run. Oh, that's putting... The Teferis Shmura Matz Bakery, located in Lawrence, New York, is happy to accommodate schools and organizations who are interested in seeing Okay, let's put on one other one just for contrast. Um, so you can see. So I'll make uh, several comments. Number one, uh, what you saw is, I would say, you know, um, uh, middle of the road uh, matzah baking. Uh, they use guy, they use a non from non shabbat shabbat. Let's see, a little bit of matzahs. Yeah, okay, so that's the last comment that it was. Uh, sitting on the on the floor there, which is not a good thing. I didn't see that, but you did. Yeah, the, well, uh, there's a lump of dough sitting on the table. It was sitting on the table. Okay, yeah. that's that's no good. Um, the second, how many ladies in there? What do you mean, Helen? Why can't Isha does a lot of uh, be, participate in the in the in the process? No, what does it say? Isha cannot be. Let's well, be a boo- be a boovie. I was kind of you know. Well, Tarubis, you mean? Okay, now yeah. you're asking. Now you're asking a. Now you're asking a Frumkai question and not a Matzah question. That's it's, that's in Shulchan Aruch of Ezra, and we are learning uh, Archaim. Um, so, but we know that Isha is kosher. How do we know Isha is kosher? That's how it says that the Isha is tilish by my children. Darash Rama, Isha right? And the who my he lasha who meisik or whatever. So the ladies are have been involved in the process from the Mikad must know, but. The, the the better bakeries, Namash certainly the Chaburis, will try to have at least Shemr Shabbos. Um, guys with yarmulkes, uh, you know, even if they don't, they, I know they used to use Russians a lot in Brooklyn. As you can see, it's not easy. Um, I saw going to stuff. No one runs HMI to why is it problematic? Well, I'll answer your question in a second, Jonathan. But uh, the, it, it depends on the upgrades on the various. And I spoke to a Greenspan who was in who has, uh, used to be, or whatever, he's in charge of a lot of the Chaburis here in Lakewood. And he, uh, he, uh, he kept, uh, kept, me the phone for, I kept him on the phone for 40 minutes, and he explained that, I said, can, can I bring my people down, whatever, theoretically, Chaburis says, you have to pick which Chumra you want. Because each Chaburah, and it's obviously the Rosh Chaburah picks the Chumras, each Chaburah has a different set of Chumras. I said, is there anyone which aggregates all the Chumras? He says, then you produce one matzah. Um, so, no, some chabur, chabur is a machmur on the stick, some chabur is a machmur uh, only on the sheet, some chabur is a matzah, a machmur on, on, on other things. And there's a list of, of 10 possible chumras. I would say, the, you know, as you go up the list, the tzadashav is start narrowing. Um, but I would imagine in the Lakewood Matzah Bakery uh, at this point, they're not employing uh, Mexicans, I would imagine. They're going to tend to go down there and take a look. But I'm sure they're all Shemr Shabbos. In Brooklyn, even in Brooklyn, they try to put yarmulkes in all the Russians. Right, Warchai, to, to make believe? 
Um, and it was delightful over the years to hear them sing, you say I'm watching Mitzvah in Russian, that's a bad, a bad Russian accent. Um, I'm Ukrainian, so I can't, uh, I don't speak Russian too well. Anyway, uh, as far as the process is concerned, uh, yes, there seem to have been uh, certain uh, gaps in the process. Let's see if we can find another one. Maybe it'll be different. Let's see. I want to turn this over to you. I was hoping to learn that but we'll have to get to that over the Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Let me say, to Okay. You got the different set of pictures. It's a different, a different picture here of actors here. How many mats is all? How many mats is on the stick? Four. Four? Yeah. Okay. My name is Bulechi de Spitzer. I'm living here in Brooklyn. It's okay. And I'm, I'm, here, I'm the manager of the place here in the South of Matzah Baking. So all day we're making just matzah. I have 6D people working here. Everything is by hand. Nothing is with the machine. They're making the dough by hand. The baking is not by, not by gas. It's only by wood and coal. It's very interesting that everything is the same like 2,000 years ago. Pesach otherwise known as Passover, is a week-long right. holiday which Jews celebrate their freedom from slavery. This is going on more than a, a minute, or Mark, hey, let's skip it. Jews are commanded to refrain from eating any bread except matzah. Let's... No fees or minimums and no oh. overdraft fees are another reason banking with Capital One isn't even easier. I love it. Capital One Matzis. Yeah, yes. Okay, sorry. Couldn't talk to you earlier. What's up? Was that Capital Aleph uh, in the Tehillim? Capital One? Hey, sorry, everybody. The uh, YouTube is uh, taking on a life of its own, so I can't. Uh, let's just use the word um, properly organized what it is that's being shown. My apologies. Second. We're waiting for the second video, right? Is that here we go? Okay. Hold on a sec. Things with the machine. The, the, making the dough by hand. The baking is not by um, not by gas. It's only by wood and coal. It's very interesting that everything is the same like two thousand years ago. Pesach otherwise known as Passover, is a week long okay. holiday which Jews celebrate their freedom from slavery and Egypt. On Pesach, Jews understand why. When the Jews were exiting Egypt, they left in such haste. Process to make money away from any water. Next, water is drawn from a well and mixed with the flour. That's when the clock starts ticking. 
According to Jewish law, from when the water first touches a flower, it must be baked within 18 minutes or less. Touches a flower, it must be baked within 18 minutes or less. The mixture is kneaded into a dough, divided into parts, flattened into shape, and then pierced with tiny holes so that it bakes evenly and doesn't puff up. Then it's placed in a wood-fired oven for just a few seconds until it's ready. In order to make sure the bread remains unleavened, the entire process must be done in less than 18 minutes. From when the water touched the flour, till it's coming out from the oven, the entire process needs to be in, in the 18 minutes. And the oven is hot like 2300 degrees. It takes approximately 15 to 20 seconds to bake a matzah. Any second more, the matzah gets burned. It's a very high pressure environment. At the end of the 18 minute cycle, all that has not yet been baked is disqualified and discarded, and all equipment. You're on mute. I'm sorry, my mic was off. What was that machine that it was aiming at the oven? I assume it was a temperature machine, right? Chaira, that little handheld thing it was aiming at the oven. Yes, it was, a, it was a thermometer. They were just trying to see how, to make sure the oven is hot enough. A 2300 is more than we assumed, right? I thought it was 1500. So, is there a chumrah on how high the how high the oven has to be? That's a good question. We have to ask Rabbi Callis that. I'm marking down the things we have to ask Rabbi Callis tomorrow. Okay, let's go right there. Equipment, even the baker's hands, is washed, dried, and inspected in order to make sure that there is no residue, after which a new cycle will begin. Our matzah gets better every year. In this bakery, we're baking approximately 100,000 pounds matzah a year. The fact that so many people enjoying the matzah what we're baking, this takes me away the stress. Here in the baking, we're working very hard to keep the workers in a nice, in a happy atmosphere. We have a lot of competition. It's three other bakeries, but we're working all together. Even if it's my competitor, we're helping each other out because we're family. Was that three or four? Yeah. Hello, hello. Was that, was that three or four? Before that, before that, if you go back, he had a lot of uh, betzik sitting on the table before it started rolling it. So roll it back. Let's take a look. A lot, of pieces, a lot of pieces sitting there. Just Betzek or, or Mamish like in the previous one, a pile of dough? The, they were still, they had just been cut. And they were just sitting there. One second, they just been cut is waiting for the guy to step up to do start the Arika, right? It's okay. just spiced. So that, that's, that's, after, that's after the bats. So it's, it's already been uh, worked on. If, after this, after this. After this, after this. Far. Okay, this video is not great because so, the, so the process is beginning to end. Start uh, right now, start right now. Go, go. We'll just, just play it now. It's better every year. In this bakery, we're baking approximately 100,000 pounds matzah a year. In fact, that so many people... Look at the table now. Join them. Look at the table. The Yo, what is that little piece there? Yeah, well, this is a good question. You'll see okay, more. No, that, that, that little piece, you're right. That little piece is a piece of, uh, that's, a, that's a throw on the table, and waiting to be to be needed. He, did, he, he needed the first, that piece, the one that's in front of him, he needed in a second. So, okay. Uh, they're not, they're not you, have to, you have to have two going on at the same time. Now we already established. And, th and that pin is about to go on the second one. Let it go. Let's see. And that's what we're baking. This takes me away the stress. You're right. Okay, you're baking, you're working very hard to keep the workers um, in a nice... I, I'll, I'll take a look later in the afternoon, but, you know, when I'm there. But it seems to me, in order for speed purposes, guy throwing uh, probably throws one waits 10 seconds, five seconds, and then throws the other. So there is going to be something on the table without Isuk. And then the question is, uh, you know, how much of a Shia is that? Um, and is that violative of the rush? Uh, it's a matter, it seems to me, it's a matter of manpower and a matter of uh, the guy coordinating throwing, you know. Uh, can't wait too long uh, because then 
the the isuk, the cut, the, you have the other end. I mean, that's why this is such a such a tricky process because the isuk requires you to be masik in it on all parts of the cycle. That starts with Alicia, as, as as the Maril says. So, what do you do? Okay, are we out of videos today? So let me let me learn a little bit inside here at eleven fifty three. Are we done with the video? Actually, actually that, that place is pretty high tech. You saw those laser beams to, to, on, on the dough, so you know exactly where to cut it. I didn't see that. What was that laser beam? There, there were red lines show, to, to, on, on the actual uh, tube of dough, the log of dough, so you know exactly where to cut it. I, I think that was added uh, to the video. Oh, no, we did. We, yeah. When we went to Get to Web in Monroe, we, uh, we used the laser like that. It's interesting, though, that none of the videos. Shoshita Tarush, where, where they're really rushing to get each mat in and only taking one mat at a time very quickly, but really no she is. The, no, because there's because because of Pesach, the number of Chaburis in the world that do Shita Tarush is less than one percent. It's growing every year. Um, and the reason for that is because first of all, the cost is prohibitive. Um, if you're trying to feed a family of 16, which is certainly not uncommon in, in our circles, um, and if you're Makwin and hand mats, which uh, my family is. I don't know what percentage of Klai Yisrael is Makhbun and Matzah, on Ham Matzah, but it's a very high percentage um, because uh, all Hasidim are and all Bnei Taira are. So, you know, and there's some yaks left and there are a lot of uh, old line Balabatim and the modern Orthodox who eat Machine Matzahs, but the Machine Matzahs as a narrative um, shrink every year, I would say. On the other hand, everything is humongously expensive. So I asked this of a uh, you know, the Bnei Taira here uh, when I come to visit Lakewood, and they shrug and they say, the more cost, the happier we are. We're getting it like a, a sregum. I said, the cost of a sregum, a nice asterisk, went from, pick me a number, uh, you know, uh, to five, six years ago, you can get a decent asterisk for $100, and then all of a sudden, it's 500 literally. So it went up five times. So matzahs, until a few years ago, were $22 a pound. I remember writing out the checks. Uh, two years ago, three years ago, twenty-two dollars a pound, and now they are forty dollars a pound. So they doubled in four years or five years. Am I wrong about that, Marachai? That seems to be about the number, correct? So seventy dollars a pound already. No, one second. So it's forty dollars a pound. Regular matzahs, regular matzahs, regular, regular, regular shots of matzahs. I bet you, uh, how much are they? Forty. Got to be at least forty. I bet you to know, forty-two. The chabura matzahs. I heard a number yesterday, which I almost fell off the chair. One hundred ten dollars a pound. Um, so that's the answer to your question. Yes, that comes at a price. The higher, the, 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 the lower the number of matzahs that are produced by a chabura means that an hour of their valuable slot between uh, Tu B'Shvat and, and the of Pesach is being devoted to you less matzahs, and they make money off matzahs. Obviously, I don't know if to explain the basic economics. So the more you want to be Bahadur and the more you want to take over, and there's a basically, I'll tell you the truth, Mik Amchi Yisrael. I'm not going to go into the sociological underpinnings with this is for an edit, uh, an article in dialogue or wherever. Um, but the, the Metzius is that there's a growing percentage of Pesach where there is, but it's still tiny, and no one in the Lakewood Super Chaburis are going to take a video of it. That's also a problem. You have to commission it. You got to go over to, you got to, no, that doesn't work on uh, matzahs. It only works on striking, but it won't work on that either. Rav Nachum wants to know if in Shemitah, the matzahs should be free. First of all, the answer to that is not. I, I, I was coming, we're going to comment before about Israel. Yeah, okay. So, well, the, the, you'll be finding out this at this level that Israel, the boxes are going to be very expensive. Um, so the cost is going to come down. So the way it's worked in the last two shemitas is they were a little embarrassed, so they call, they charge you a bit less. Um, but they will shrug and tell you straight out because I'll tell you the zin of, of law, and they're selling you the box or they're selling you the lulav, whichever the lachlan is. We'll get to that closer to to obviously closer to sukkahs. Um, but uh, you're not going to you're not going to say well I want it because first of all inflation the transportation cost. Of getting the little love of from Eretz Yisrael for here will have gone up ten times by then, five times legitimately, and uh, the five times I got a bill for my just to give you an example for the ocean shipment insurance firm for the, the Dovsovetic uh, 
safe as a current. I looked at the thing and I rubbed my eyes. I thought it was off. It was off by a digit. It was literally four times what it was uh, two years ago. The ocean shipping used to be inconsequential. They used to be able to ship vast amounts of farm by, by ship. It took a long time. took a month which it still takes, um, but it was not a significant cost. It would be a $200 bill, $150 bill, and all of a sudden now the bill is $1,500. So it's, uh, it's, it's, everything has gone up. Let's not kvetch here. Let's learn Tyra. What is, uh, is there another video we want to play? It's 11.58. Rabbi Katz is going to come on at 12.02. Is there anything that we can put on in two minutes? Or if not, then put on the, put on Tafnun Samach. Let's learn Let's learn this. Uh, this is a, let's put up the afternoon no, stomach. By the way, so, yeah. ne neither one of the videos showed them adding the water. And one of them that they showed the other night, they had a little slot open the door. A guy sticks his hand, dumps the water, and pulls his hand back out. It's completely uh, different. I hear. Okay, so tomorrow uh, we have we have another shear. We have two more sh shots of this um, tonight, uh, tomorrow, and uh, tomorrow night. So we will see some more videos for your viewing pleasure. Uh, <laughs> let's see Tough Samach um, is based. We didn't even see the Chazanish yet, okay. Now we'll see tomorrow, because Rabbi Kael sent that in his Marva Kaimis. One more, one more back. Page one, and uh, it's a different page, pagination, probably 116 is the English number on my page. And one more back. No, this is Tafna Tess. I need Tafna Samach. It's here in this package, I believe. Is it? There you go. Tough Samach safe base. Harashim Shal Mitzvah Matzvah Yimos Yosem Mizaris Oiskin Bahem Musaya Al Yadam Musaya Bari Chas Bechira El Chalad Masis Le Le Tapul Hu Baatzmai Kamitzvah. So the Oisk Vav Mishura brings a who should be doing this and you should do it yourself. My Zayin Baatzmai. And he brings the Rizal via via Triach for Atzmoi and Oiz Oiz Zayin. Atzis Chami Yazir with the Tinga Love and a Chomor a Rizal. Okay. Um, so the, the Biralacha in Dibri Amasko. Where is it? Uh, it's a tough simon test. Did I make a mistake and give it to the wrong simon? Could be. Yeah, it's tough no test. Um, tough no test to be a lacha. Sorry, tough no test. Actually, ask about me on Yachmitz. Those of you who came on to, to hear of a cat, so coming out at 12.03. Let's go take a two minute trip through this be a lacha. Zemetruvas Arash, Devri Amachko, Vachashinus Asik. Beautiful, right there. Vachashinus Asik. Zemetruvas Arash, Kreden Vachashinus Arash, again, the custard was a mitz, of Arachai. So you'll hear the Raim of the mitz, of Arachai, the Rush, they're all more or less on the same page. And you can't be Lush based Chama El Piatanor, the Chain Hebi Aguda, Ayn Shum. The Chain, three times that, Kasav Arash, Kam Kay, Arash Kam Bet, Sekla Achashinus Asik, but once somebody touched. The betzek, who gam kein cham, they really were asking by the gam kein machim tzuyat. That's the shita zarash, and that's the what we call chomer and rush. Three like the bezel shir chacham and mil. There's no eighteen minutes here, and then he goes on to explain why. Script the brackets. We didn't ask a bit as far as our rabbi met some other chlemim tzim mishchev, and we don't find somebody say they're wrong. Um, but on the other hand, we have the gemara which says mil. So which one is it? Um, not everybody agrees with this rush. The second the Isuk starts, um, then it, then it, then the the clock to Chometz is accelerated geometrically, not 18 minutes. How much is it? He doesn't tell you. And that they leave open the exact amount of a minute, and that's Nitni Hitnu to the current temporary Paiskin to tell you uh, how much. 
and it's not long. But Tila Rabbin, a person completely loved by him, Barambam, calls much of noise, better than you, I mean, P. Yadai, Chuck the Hilk Mill. Said the Rabbin Ferret, the shear is a mill. And the Gamach says, but Chayim Nech and Gam came after the shear mill. So the Rambam is clearly Chaylik under Rush. The Chayim Mukha said to us a Rajba. Then in the in the in the in the Ramban lived in Barcelona. No, the Ram lived sorry in Garona, uh, which is just, uh, forty kilometers outside of Barcelona, which is a small town. But they didn't have a big fancy matzah bakery, which they probably had in Barcelona, which probably had a few hundred families, as opposed to the uh, I'm just guessing, as opposed to it was a big town. Europe, as opposed to Garona, which had probably 50 families, they finished. Um, the Ramban was able to produce what they were able to produce because he didn't have to run um, the whole Catalonia, I'm not sure. Just uh, it was like a prime, you know, a billion times bigger. Uh, and uh, he did not have an oven that had two chambers in it. He did not have a, a bakery which had two chambers in it, therefore they were the matzah in, in house A, and they carried it over to house B. Says the Mishabura, obviously that's a Shia. Okay. The only was worried about it being more than 18 minutes. And all this is clear in the Ramban. This is the famous Kasha of Dr. Maisha. The why is it from suggestion? Chayker. If she is some mitzara, if as far as the rush, we'll light her. Tzir v'shir v'shan nesra. V'niach v'tzarechim. Tama archayim shleim v'yud dover adarka meisha b'zeh. V'galma adarka meisha gufa tama shehetek lad from suggestion by God who steer him in a bale haida rush. Shavi mechaber take of achar zeh. So now, what do we see from all this? Says the Bira Lacha. If we need to name the adarka meisha chazer by. Anyway. Uh, says the Bira Lacha, we have Mechlech Tzvishayim. Not everybody took this on, and therefore, normative matzis are not necessarily Chayish Shal Shittu Zerash, not for that timer is set at 18 minutes. Um, and the Shittu Zerash matzis, what we call Chapur matzis, are Chayish Shal Shittu Zerash. Okay, well, I say, well, just, uh, first of all, scheduling. So today is Tuesday, so um, we're off tonight from Al uh on tomorrow at 11, we'll be praying for Rabbi Kalis this year. It's more, it's a, more or less the same Arba Kaimis. Thursday will be already a different topic on Lushma. And the, uh, we'll get a chance to, tomorrow and uh, Wednesday night uh, to look to, at some of these more of these uh, Shlomo videos now that we know what we're talking about as a different surah. Okay, I also have to apologize because I, I made a mistake which I didn't, wouldn't realize until afterwards, I didn't realize that my voice, I was, um, as you'll see, I'm interactive with cats in this video. My voice did not pick up on the thing because I was sitting too far away from the mic, which is a rookie mistake. I apologize. So, but you'll hear his answers. As you will see, I slow him down um, and I try to try to uh, try to make sure that he understands he's talking to us and not to his uh, colleagues in in the base Aaron Chabura and he's crystal clear. And uh, you'll hear about this topic starting right now.